Hello, this is Dr. Lori Carter, and today I'm with Dr. Mariano Sanz, the professor and chairman of periodontology at the University Computance in Madrid, Spain. Hello, Dr. Sanz. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? Well, thank you. I hope you are as well. Very well. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be Good. here with you. Thank you. The pleasure is all ours. Today we're going to be talking about your recent article, Clinical and Public Health Implications of Periodontal and Systemic Diseases, an Overview. Congratulations on the publication of this review article, which serves as an insightful expose into both the breadth and the depth of knowledge, which was acquired during the last half century regarding the etiopathogenesis of periodontal diseases and their host interactions. In this article, you delineated three phases in the evolution of our understanding of periodontitis. Would you please identify the light bulb moments or the seminal findings which emerged during each of these three phases? Certainly. Uh, basically, uh, these three phases encompass uh, a period of about 50 years. Uh, and in this uh, period, the first phase basically the 80s and the 90s, was basically dedicated to research trying to identify the main etiological factor behind periodontitis. And uh, of course, most of the emphasis was placed in identifying the bacteria, the periodontal pathogens, who were more strongly associated with uh, periodontitis, the disease that destroys the attachment apparatus of teeth to the jaws. And uh, probably one of the main leading research groups at that time was the group from Forsyth, Boston, led by Sokransky. That really was uh, the group that identified the main key periodontal pathogens uh, who were thought as the main actors behind the etiology of periodontitis. But at the same time, uh, mostly in the United States also, there was a group that was looking at uh, the host response against that bacterial challenge. And they identified uh, key host response mechanisms who, which at the end were the responsible of the tissue destruction. That is, the bacteria triggered the response, but it was the response who uh, destroyed the tissues that basically uh, correspond to the expression of the disease, to the phenotype of this disease periodontitis characterized by periodontal attachment loss and bone loss. So that was basically the main uh, first stage of the uh, scientific era of the understanding of periodontal diseases. But later it was realized that this uh, relationship between the pathogens and the host response was not linear at all. That it was heavily influenced by the individual susceptibility of uh, the patient. And therefore, it was a big uh, search to understand which were the risk factors, both individual and behavioral, that influenced the uh, response of the host against this bacterial aggression. And this is the area that we call the area of the risk factors, where uh, all kinds of traits, from genetic traits to environmental traits, were uh, tried to understand which one was playing a heavier role into modulating the response of the inflammatory and immune system to these uh, bacterial pathogens. It was clear in this uh, time, basically the 90s and 2000 to 2010 probably, that uh, bacteria were the main triggering mechanism, but how uh, the response against this bacterial challenge was uh, modulated, depended a lot on the expression of the disease, and this was heavily influenced by our genes and also the environment, whether the patient smoked, whether the patient had 
uh, systemic health of disease, and of course, whether the patient had good compliance with uh, oral hygiene. But then, at the end of the 2000s, basically, uh, another area started when realizing that the local inflammatory and immune responses that characterize periodontitis uh, go beyond uh, the local gingival periodontal tissues and they influence uh, our system, our uh, health. And uh, therefore, at the beginning, we try to understand what were the epidemiological associations between periodontitis and some of the most common chronic diseases that affect uh, mankind, mainly uh, diabetes and cardiovascular diseases. And uh, research went beyond the epidemiological associations, trying to understand what were the mechanisms linking uh, these uh, local chronic inflammatory diseases in the gums affecting the, the rest of the body. And uh, of course, then is when we try to understand what is the role of uh, bacterial translocation from the gingival tissues to the blood flow, or also uh, the dumping of inflammatory mediators from the periodontal tissues to the blood flow and the possible influence that uh, this uh, systemic inflammation and the so-called bacteremia, the passage of bacteria to the blood flow could influence the uh, uh, other systems in the body. And since then, basically, this is the third uh, phase that we call the area of periodontal medicine. Basically, more than 50 diseases have been investigated being associated to uh, periodontitis. And of course, some of these associations are very uh, modest, uh, feeble in a way, and others are stronger. And uh, we understand, and this is depicted in this special issue in Periodontology 2000, that uh, there is a very thorough review, not only of the epidemiological associations, but also of the mechanisms and the public health implications of uh, the most important systemic diseases that have been associated to periodontitis, ranging from diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, but also uh, other important diseases as cancer or uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, pulmonary diseases, etc. Thank you very much, Dr. Sanz. I'd like to ask you next, if you could please elaborate for us on current lines of research investigating these systemic translocations of local immune responses to distinct distant organs. Yes, of course. Uh, and here, there are two levels of investigations. One's looking at the passage of uh, bacteria or bacterial antigens the blood flow and the, the distant location of these uh, bacterial components uh, at distant sites. And here is very interesting, for example, the study of uh, some of the bacterial antigens like uh, uh, LPS from some of the gram-negative uh, typical bacteria from the uh, subgingival flora like P. gingivalis that are able to translocate through uh, the, uh, 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 the, the, the barrier between the brain and the rest of the body and being able to affect uh, inflammatory mechanisms in the brain. And uh, there's been a clear association between periodontitis, for example, and Alzheimer's disease. Of course, uh, this is a very important line of research that needs to be followed and needs to be uh, pursued, uh, but there are, I think, uh, very nice elements uh, uh, in this uh, uh, identification of uh, antigens going uh, through this uh, uh, cerebrovascular barrier. Similar is the case, for example, of uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, how 
some of the uh, toxins from periodontal bacteria are able to clive proteins which uh, develop uh, autoantibodies that could trigger some of the bursts of activity of rheumatoid arthritis. So being the antigens of some of these very specific uh, bacteria or being uh, the inflammatory responses to these uh, antigens, uh, uh, both uh, are uh, very important lines of uh, research uh, nowadays. Now a completely, for example, different line is the line of uh, uh, a very important periodontal bacteria, Fusobacterium nucleatum, and how this bacteria, once it is in the system, can become uh, uh, an oncogen and being related with uh, colorectal cancer, for example. Uh, that doesn't mean at all that these bacteria cause the cancer, but uh, some of these bacteria and some of these antigens may be implicated in the development of these diseases. Dr. Mariano Sanz, I'd like to thank you very much for being with us today and for your insightful comments on the evolution of the field of periodontology. Thank you. Stop. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.